don't date someone who doesn't put the grocery cart back in the cart return. It's called creating jobs. Actually, it's called not being rude and making someone's job easier. Pours box of cornflakes directly on the floor in aisle seven. It's called creating jobs, sweetie. I made my first Photoshop thing. I love it. Never have I seen anything that more perfectly encapsulates the personality of a beta fish. I think the university course database should have a filter to only show classes taught by extremely old people who are insane. Professors of a tenure. Got it. All body is body horror because having a body is scary. All psychology is psychological horror because thinking is scary. All survival is survival horror because being alive is scary. No, 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 you don't understand. I want to watch this show slash movie, read this book, listen to this podcast, but I must be in the right mindset and the exact headspace to begin or I just can't. All right, name it. Today I learned blind people have a hard time drawing because they interpret the world as three-dimensional and struggle to portray it as two-dimensional. And here I am, an idiot, thinking it's because they can't see. Let's see, things that are covered by your wizard insurance. Let's see here. Hmm, top surgery, bottom surgery, witch encounters, one per century, killed by Greg. Ooh, middle surgery, that's a new one. Putting a glue trap under my fridge to lure out my blorbos. Come on out, you little snot bags. Find out your gay name. Your first name plus gets down on one knee. My last name. My favorite thing about Sweeney Todd is that Sweeney gets into the killing and baking people business because he's a deeply broken man destroyed by an unjust and corrupt system that cost him his freedom and family and has been driven mad by revenge. And Mrs. Lovett does it because something wrong with her. The trope where a character overhears something out of context and assumes the worst is usually annoying and bad, but I think it works really well in Shrek. We, the audience, know that Fiona is talking about herself. But regardless, she's calling herself these terrible things because she is an ogre. If Fiona is these things because she is an ogre, what does that make Shrek? If Fiona says no one could love her because she's an ogre, she is saying that Shrek is also unlovable whether she wants to or not. In my opinion, the scene is a really good portrayal of how when you talk poorly of yourself or others for having a trait, you're also talking about every other person who shares that trait even if you love them or think what you're saying doesn't apply to them. Not going to lie, I saw the word Shrek and never expected this to be a deep post. On the Being Deep About Shrek website? Give your bunnies a smooch on the snoop for me today, please. I don't have a bunny. You guys like dice? How about a one and three quarter pound dice forged out of solid steel? Roll for damage. Throw for damage. To put it how my friend Keston said best, there's no table that will survive that role. Writers will be like, here's my current work in progress. Can't wait to share more. And then you never hear about it again. Uh, worst. Imagine a world where the oxygen density of the atmosphere is higher and you can have a bee that is cat sized and you can pet your bee like a cat. <laughs> That would be nice. Why do I feel the urge to make another teleporter, but this time I teleport to the past? Have you considered instead teleporting bread? Yeah, it did not go well. We need to talk about this. Who is he? Is he okay? Who's his friend? Is his friend okay? I swear if his friend is not okay, so help me. 